Dr. Ashton, we have new questions from our viewers here. Let's start vaccine question number one here. Uh, after receiving the vaccine, if I take an antibody test, will the test show I've made antibodies? Not necessarily, and that is why this is not, I want to emphasize, not recommended. You don't go and get an antibody test to see how the vaccine is working for you. The biggest reason is because there are different assays or different types of tests that look for different types of antibodies for the spike protein. And so you could have good protection and come up with a negative test. We've been saying that from the get-go with antibody tests. Uh, so can't emphasize it enough. It is not recommended that you just go and check your antibody levels or presence or absence after getting vaccinated. All right, good to know. Uh, next question, also on the vaccines. What percentage are you protected after receiving the first vaccine dose? So based on some published clinical data, it appears that two weeks after the first dose, most people can get around 80% protection. Um, however, and this is really important, that does not mean you don't go back for the second dose because the full protection in around the 94, 95%, even 100%, depending on the vaccine, only takes effect after 14 days after the second dose. And the second dose kicks in a different arm of our immune system known as T cell immunity. So it's not just, well, 80% is good enough. Um, remember, we're talking about a virus here that has been shown to do some serious harm. So you want to follow the clinical trial protocols and get the full dosing regimen. But we saw some people not going back for that second one. And when you hear 80%, it's like, wow, that sounds good enough to me. Well, it would be if there weren't something called 94, 95, or 100 percent. So you want to do the full regimen and do it as it has been authorized. I was asking for a friend. You know, I got my <laughs> I second know, dose. I, okay? I know you did. <laughs> okay. All right, question three. With new studies showing links between dementia and lack of sleep, how can folks with insomnia make sure they're getting the proper amount of rest? You guys, we can't talk about sleep enough. I've said it before. Sleep has a PR problem in this country. We think of it as a luxury. It's a medical necessity. And inadequate sleep has been linked to heart disease, brain disease, disease, cognitive decline like dementia, et cetera, et cetera. So you want to commit to this as one of the pillars of good health. Six to seven, or in some studies, seven to nine hours seems to be around the sweet spot. If you are not getting that sleep, please get it evaluated. There could be a medical cause like obstructive sleep apnea, but it's not a luxury. This is critically important to our overall health. I wasn't asking for a friend on that one. <laughs> We've money. made progress, don't you think, Amy? It's getting better. Yeah, sometimes. Comes and goes. Some days. You when I see that five-hour energy drink, I'm like, oh, yeah, not good. no. Wow, Mama is not happy. She is <laughs> <laughs> tough love today. Uh, submit your questions today? to Dr. <laughs> Jen on our Instagram today. at Dr. J. Oh. Asher. Doc, thank you as always. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.